These are your integrated math two notes for section 3.1.2. This is video uh, one of two. Our topic number one here is functions derived from linear relationships. And our specific learning target is I can solve absolute value equations. So you can pause the video, write this down in your notes. All right, our first example is we have the absolute value of 2x minus 11 equals 17. And we have the absolute value bars are isolated by themselves equal to this quantity. So what we know about absolute value is that the inside, the value inside the absolute value bars could be positive 17 or it could be negative 17. So our first step is we're going to rewrite this as two separate equations, um, one equal to positive 17 and one equal to negative 17 without the absolute value bar. So 2x minus 11 equals negative 17. And 2x minus 11 could also equal positive 17. So that's the first thing you need to do once you have an absolute value equation with the bars on the left side, and just a number on the right side. So now we just solve the two equations like we've been doing for years. So we're gonna do the addition of property of equality, at 11, at 11 both sides, we'll do both equations at the same time. All right, so then we get 2x equals, what's that, negative six? And this side, we're gonna get 2x equals 28. All right, so now we wanna solve for x, we want one x, not two x, so we're gonna divide both sides by two. So divide by two. And I get x equals negative 3. This side I divide by 2. Divide by 2 and I get x equals 14. So we have two answers. It could be negative 3 or it could be 14. Can we check these? Correct. We can check them. We simply substitute back into the original equation and see if it's true or not. So we substitute negative 3 for x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 11 negative 17. Absolute value of negative 17 is 17. Check. Take the 14, substitute it in. 2 times 14 is 28. 28 minus 11 is 17. The absolute value of 17 is 17. Check. Those are two solutions. All right, example two. Absolute value of x plus 8 equals 0. So this is a special case. The lowest the value could be inside the absolute value bars um, not inside the absolute values of the bars, but the lowest value you can get from absolute value is zero, right? You can't get a negative number. So the x could be negative, but you can't get a negative number when you take the absolute value of something. So x plus a equals zero. I can't break it into two equations because zero is neutral. You can't have a positive zero and a negative zero, right? It's neutral. So there's gonna be one solution here. We're gonna just go x plus a equals zero. Subtract eight from both sides and we'll get x equals negative eight. Check it, substitute back in, negative eight plus eight is zero, the absolute value of zero is zero. Check. All right, next example is also a special case here. We have the absolute value of seven x minus 57 equals negative 21. Think about this. Do I just break it into two equations? Equal to positive 21, negative 21? No, you can't do that. Because no matter what you substitute for x, whatever value you plug in for x, it's going to be impossible to get negative 21, right? Because if you have negative 21 in here, the absolute value of that is 21, right? There's no way to get a negative value. So this would be an example of no solution. All right. And then finally, a little bit more complicated one is where we have to do some work to isolate the absolute value bars. So your first step is you need to follow your rules of algebra to isolate, isolate the absolute value bars by themselves. So the first thing we're going to do here is let's move this 30. It's negative 30. So how do you move it? Addition property of equality. We're going to add the opposite, which is positive 30, to both sides. So then we have four times the absolute value bars of 2x minus 7 equals positive 24. Please note, if 
you first looked at this, you saw the negative 6, you were thinking, oh, we can't do this one. Not so fast, right? We add 30 to both sides. As we're starting to isolate this, we see it does equal a positive number. We're going to be able to solve this one. All right. Now, this means 4 times the absolute value of 2x minus 7. Do not, do not do distributive property here. How do we undo multiplication? That's right. We're going to divide. So we're going to divide by 4, divide by 4, and we get the absolute value of 2x minus 7 equals 6. Now, does our problem look like example number 1? You bet. It does. So let's, give me a little space here. Let's break it into two equations. We're going to have 2x minus 7 could equal negative 6 in there. Or 2x minus 7 equals positive 6. We're going to solve these. Add 7 to both sides. 2x equals 1. Divide by 2. So we get x equals 1 half. This side, add 7, add 7. 2x equals 13. Divide that by 2, both sides. And we get x equals 13 halves. Or I'm going to say 6 and 1 half. I could say 6.5 as well. All right? Can we check them? Sure. 2 times a half is 1. 1 minus 7 is negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Check. X is 6 and a half. 2 times 6 and a half is 13. 13 minus 7 is 6. Absolute value of 6 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Check. Okay? That's it for solving absolute value equations. The next section will be on solving absolute value inequalities.